Hey humans, how are we doing today? Uh, in this video, I want to show you how you measure a bevel angle on a straight razor. And I want to squash any absurd uh, rumors or facts or whatever it is that uh, I read recently online a few times where people complain about the Dovo bevel angle being thicker than would normally be the case for the razors that are older that they have more respect for. Uh, they specifically mentioned that uh, they like a range from 17 to 20 degrees, so I'm assuming that if it's more obtuse than 20 degrees, it would be unacceptable. So hopefully, by my little basic video here, I can show you that uh, that's not the case, that they're far more acute than that. Uh, so what do we have here? We have this little digital caliper that uh, goes to a hundredth of a millimeter. I have my little chicken scratch drawing I'm going to show you on how uh, you determine what the bevel angle is. I have a little piece of paper so that I can measure the bevel angle and write it down because I forget everything in five seconds. I have uh, CRS disease, you know, can't remember shit. And then we have a few different razors over here. Uh, we have a Dovo 6 8 Bismarck. A Dovo 5.8 Full Hollow uh, Pearl X, a Dovo 5.8 Extra Full Hollow Prima Clang, uh, and a 4.8 Boker uh, Extra Hollow. So these are all factory sealed. You're going to watch me open them up up close. I'm going to change the lens to a 24 millimeter wide angle with a macro so that it can be hopefully right up on this case. Uh, and then we'll just measure them and go to the web and go to a standard triangle calculator and show you. Okay. So, now let's switch lenses and let's begin. Okay, I'm back again, and uh, what am I starting with here? I'm starting with showing you my little chicken scratch drawing here. Uh, okay, we could see I got an A, a B, a crude representation of a straight razor's spine. This is the hollowed out area, and this is the little triangle that matches with this part, okay? So once they put the razor into that double wheel thing, from there on, they're always grinding or honing or stropping, whether it's a belt, a wheel, whatever it is, this part and this part are always touching. Okay? So uh, you have the A and the B. That would correspond on here to this part. That's the A. And that's the B in my little shitty drawing. And then you have the, uh, the bevel angle there, which would be um, in the drawing. That would be the C. So to figure out what the angle of the bevel plane is, you measure the thickness of the spine. That would be the AB in my drawing here. And then you measure from the grind mark on the spine, from the outside of the grind mark, as furthest away from the edge, you measure in a straight line to the tip of the razor. So that would be, you see this little, this little, this little mark right here? You're going to measure from that mark all the way to the end. That's one side of your triangle. Same thing on the other side. And then the thickness. You go on the internet, you figure out the uh, thing that they taught you in 10th grade that you've forgotten with sine, cosine, or tangent, whatever the hell it was, I don't remember. And uh, there you go. That's the angle of the bevel of the razor. That much you can bet on. Um, now, I did read once where somebody was suggesting that they set that part correctly, right? And then from there on, they just grind it with the thing off like this to make a shorter bevel that's thicker. Uh, they are not supposed to do that. That is a big no-no. And um, if they did, it's my next little shitty drawing here, uh, when you would go to hone it, you would have it looking the way it's supposed to. And then, yeah, this is a very bad drawing. I'm not a drawer, okay? I'm a talker. A talker and a writer. Uh, you would see an abrupt change in the little bevel. So it would have the incumbent one, which was fatter. And then as you would be putting it on the whetstone, if you stopped and looked at it with a 20x to 40x loop somewhere in there, you would see a little new, narrower bevel coming out. Um, I have actually seen that one time a long time ago. We used to have these amazing Thiers Assard razors. If you Google, um, uh, what would you Google? 
uh, try Googling uh, Sears Assard negative bevel, and you'll hear about a razor that they made for a short time that uh, I happen to know from somebody that worked at Sears Assard that was a higher up at the time explained to me that they were doing all the grinding and stuff, and then they were finishing with the razor's back of the razor within the plane of the thing that they were honing on. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't raised, it was actually violating what would be possible if you had it flush to a strop and a hone, because they would have a wheel and they would have it off to the side holding it freehand, and it was these amazing, extremely acute razors that there's a sard made from, no, I'm going to say they started it in about 2006, 7, and they finished it in about 2011, maybe early, early 12. But um, the guy from Thiers Assard, he, he loosely used the term negative bevel. Obviously, there's no such thing, but uh, that was basically what he said. Anyway, so uh, now let's go open the uh, other razors that we've got there and write down our measurements and then go use the old internet to get the measurements, okay? All right, here we go, guys. We're going to measure the four razors and write it down and then go over to the uh, internet thingamajigger. Okay, so I got Bismarck number two. That's 26820 and then the uh, third number there, and then I have the number 98, and then 106, and then the boker. Okay, so you have the two distances, and then you got the spine thing. Okay, I haven't actually measured these. I don't even know what the score is going to be. Uh, what do I think is the most acute? I'm guessing it's the boker, but I don't really know. Can we see that, cameraman? We got it? Okay. What's two plus two? Two plus two is four. You sure? Yeah. You bet your life on it? Yeah. All right. Can I get it all the way? Can't see it. Okay. It's looking at 5.5. .5. Okay, can you see that 5.5? Mm -hmm. Alright, so, and this is the 2681, oh, anyway. 5.5, .5, and then now we got to measure that distance from the two parts. You focused on it? Mm -hmm. Okay, make sure the zero is zeroed. Are you watching the caliper good? Yeah. Okay, it's about as good as I can do it. 18.83. This is exciting stuff, huh? Now we're going to open up the uh, Pearl X. I'm assuming, hey, I don't want to hear that iPad over there. I'm going to assuming that um, the Pearl X and the Prima Clang should be pretty much the same thing. Because the only difference in them is how much metal is missing between those two points. But the two points should be the same thing. We're going with the Dovo 98. You focusing on that caliper? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 4.89. Golly, how are we going to speed up this boring part of the video? Okay, you focusing on it? Mm -hmm. All right. Is that right? Like 17.07. Extra hollow. You got this? Four point five nine it said the first time. Let's see if I can get her. Four point six three. All right. We'll go with the thicker one. Four point six three. Okay, I got sixteen point nine three. I can't see it. All right. It's coming in at four point oh seven the first time I did it. What a narrow spine. It's four point oh four. So let's go with let's go with the more obtuse. That way we we make the numbers as least favorable as possible. Okay? So, now we do this part here. You have not put it Is it good now? Yeah. All right, good. 13, well, it's a little wider than that. 13.73. We're rolling. Okay, we're rolling, great. Uh, all right, so a little background here. Uh, the, the, the most acute razors I have seen were uh, the razors from Sweden that come f like before World War II, or maybe to the early 50s or so. I, I may have seen once or twice a Japanese produced early 60s razor that was profoundly acute. Uh, these are all razors that are like uh, maybe 11 degrees for the bevel, really just tremendous. Uh, and they definitely shave better. But they're real fragile. They break easy. Just you could uh, you could chip them just from being an idiot, idiot with the shaving. Okay, so can we see that? We got it. Yes. Yep. 
All right, we got my little chicken scratch here. So we got to plug in something for this and this and this, and then we push calculate, and it's going to give us that part. Okay, so uh, let's do the first one here. All right, I, I, I re remembered what I had misremembered. We got 18.83, 18.83, 5.5. So that one is at 16.795. Pretty healthy, right in the wheelhouse. Okay, now let's go do it again. And we're going to do it for the Boker 98. Yeah, you try this going upside down, survey says. Come on, calculate, dude. All right, here we go. You got it? You, you can see there? Are you rolling? Nice. What it says? We're so what it says, if you could read it. 16.47. Okay, the other one was what, 16.9? Yeah. I seem better, but still pretty good. Now let's go to uh, the other one here. This would be the Dovo Prima Clang. Push calculate. What do we got there? 15.718. Sweet. Nice one. Okay. Now the, we have the final one, the Boker. Push calculate. We got 17.047. Did you get that, cameraman? Yes. All right, well, okay, so as it turns out, everything was right near 17 degrees, except for the prima clang, which was 15 and change. So uh, in this particular specimen, uh, and don't start asking me to measure this every damn time, because I am not measuring that every time. But uh, in this particular specimen, that is a very acute modern razor. Um, anyway, that is the point here, that they're all about 17 degrees, which is more or less right around the standard that has been the case for, I don't know, going back before World War II, that's for sure. So uh, I hope that clears up that uh, they are never to be more than 20 degrees, and I have measured them from time to time and never seen anything. I don't think I've ever seen 18 degrees. But uh, that was the point of the video, so push the thumbs up.